Hello, welcome. Normally, it's rather easy to perform a qualitative analysis with Match. For example, you may have already watched our corresponding quick start tutorial video. However, in some cases, especially when some phases are present only in rather low amounts, it may be really advantageous to know about certain advanced functions and settings that could be used to determine these minor and trace phases more easily. This video is basically intended for somewhat advanced match users, so please make sure to switch the user level option on the match tab over to expert and then mark uh, use as defaults in order to make this permanent and finally close the options dialog. The diffraction data that we will use in this tutorial video are taken from the IOCR CPD round robin on quantitative phase analysis that was organized in 2001. These data are still available from the IOCR webpage under the following address. In order to get the data, please click on this standard data sets menu on the left hand side. Scroll down until you reach the individual files and click on this file cpd1c.rd in order to open it. You have to confirm the opening of the file. And as you see on my machine, these .rd files are already linked with match. On your machine, you may have to select match as the application to open the file with. As you see, the diffraction data have been imported by now, so we are ready to start with our analysis. One of the key points for a successful qualitative analysis is the accurate determination of the peak positions and peak intensities. For this, MATCH provides an amplified peak searching algorithm that is combined with profile fitting and we would like to use this by now to get the maximum accuracy. So we will go to the pattern menu, peak searching, peak search and fit, or you could also use the keyboard combination control shift K. Okay, the peak searching has been finished by now. And as you see, the red calculated profile is in very good agreement with the blue experimental diffraction data. Another crucial point for qualitative phase analysis is to use as much additional information about the sample as possible. If you know from X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy that only certain elements are present in your sample, you should use this information here on the right hand side on the restraints tab. Let's assume that we know that only light elements as well as calcium, zinc and aluminium are present in our sample. We would like to enter this information here. First of all, we will switch all elements to red in order to exclude them and then mark those elements that may be present. These are the light elements, so the first and second line of the periodic table, as well as calcium, zinc and aluminium. So now we have entered our composition restraints and can get back to the analysis. Let's now run first search match calculation and see what we get. Okay, the search match calculation has finished and has identified zinc oxide as a very good candidate for a phase that may be present. And the agreement of the peaks with the experimental diffraction data is pretty good, so we can select it as matching and copy this to the match list. Oops, what's this? There are no matching entries left, but this sample has been taken from a quantitative analysis round robin, so there should be definitely more than one phase present in the sample. So what's wrong here?
we should now take a closer look at the diffraction data in order to see what's happening. And in order to do so, we will switch over the scaling of the intensity axis to a square root of the relative intensities. And as you can see now clearly, there are several peaks that have not been determined by the match peak searching algorithm. So we should increase the sensitivity of the peak searching algorithm in order to also determine these peaks. You can do so, for example, here in the peak searching menu by running the increase sensitivity command or simply by using the keyboard shortcut F2. At first glance, it looks as if most peaks have been found by now. However, in order to determine trace phases, we should have an even closer look at the data by zooming in and checking if really all diffraction peaks have been detected. And indeed, there are at least two peaks that are still missing. So I will switch on the vertical cursor bar and add the peak at this point by keeping the control button pressed and pressing the right mouse button. Now I will go forward and add additional peaks. This one has also not been determined and I will also add this peak. Press the shift key to move the pattern to the left and this one is also missing. Okay, as you see, you should walk through the pattern and add peaks that have not been found by the peak searching algorithm in order to get the most from the diffraction data. Let's stop at this point and return back to the full view. And now we will run a search match again. Nothing happened. So obviously, determining the missing peaks was not enough to find the missing phases. What we have to do now is take a closer look at the search match parameters. There's one key functionality called residual searching, which prohibits the determination of additional phases in this context here. Residual searching means that the peak intensities that are already covered by identified phases are no longer taken into account during the search match calculation. So if peaks of major phases also contain minor contributions from trace phases, these phases will be overlooked. We have to switch off the residual searching in order to be able to determine minor and trace phases. An additional important parameter in this context is the preference for single or multiple phases. Normally, match to a certain degree tries to cover all peaks in the experimental diffraction pattern by one or just few phases. In order to prevent match from doing so, you have to move this slider to the right in order to put the maximum weight on multiple phases, so that the coverage of the experimental peaks by a single phase is no longer favored. So, okay, let's close this. I would now like to use a somewhat different approach for qualitative analysis in the sense that I will now focus on peaks that are not yet covered by selected phases. First of all, I would like to see which peaks are not yet correlated to selected phases. And for this, I can switch on a corresponding graphics option. It's called display uncorrelated peaks. I activate this option and press OK. There are these light orange bars in the background that mark peaks that are not yet identified. So I can now focus on individual peaks by clicking on these orange bars and then running a special variant of the search match calculation that excludes all phases that do not have a peak that is correlated to this experimental peak. So I will run it by now. And we are fortunate, we now get a clear result that aluminum oxide is present in the sample. So we can select it as matching. You can see that the light orange bar behind this peak 
has been removed due to the fact that it has now been correlated to the aluminum oxide phase. In the candidate list, not much has changed by now because we had deactivated the residual searching, so it doesn't matter if the phase has been identified or not, the contents here will stay the same. Never mind, let's move on to the second unidentified peak, this one, and click on it in order to mark it, and again run this special variant of the search match algorithm in order to see what we get. And we are fortunate again, now we have identified fluoride and we can also select this as matching. As you see now, all these light orange bars in the background have been removed on the left hand side of the, or in the main part of the diffraction pattern. So we can now be quite convinced that we have identified all major or all relevant phases. What we can do before finishing the analysis is to run Riedfeld refinement to get a better quantitative analysis of our sample. We just use the automatic Riedfeld refinement in this case just to get a first glance at the result. Okay, the Riedfeld refinement has converged at a pretty low R factor and chi square value, so the result seems to be pretty good and we can now display the report of our finished analysis. Okay, so we have now 94% zinc oxide, 4.3% aluminum oxide and 1.7% calcium fluoride. And we can compare this to the results of the IOCR round robin. We'll scroll back and see the measured weights and we have here aluminum oxide is 5%, zinc oxide about 94% and calcium fluoride about 1.4%. So we are pretty good with our analysis. So let's summarize what we've learned in this video. For comparison, a simple qualitative analysis using match goes like this. You import the diffraction data, run an automatic raw data processing and detection of the peaks, which happens typically automatically when you run your first search match calculation by pressing Control M. And then you use residual searching when selecting matching phases and then repeat the selection of matching phases and uh, automatic intermediate search match calculations until you see no more reasonable phases in the candidate list. An example for this is the quick start tutorial video. In more difficult cases, the procedure is a little bit modified as demonstrated in this video. You start by importing the diffraction data again, but then you first take a closer look at the background this is not shown in this video. And then you run peak searching, preferably by using the amplified version that is combined with profile fitting, for example, by pressing Control Shift K. Then you check if all peaks have been found in the diffraction pattern and maybe adjust the peak searching sensitivity by pressing F2 or F3. Then it's time to take an even closer look at the diffraction data and you start by switching the y-axis scaling either to square root or logarithm of the relative intensities. Zoom in and check if there are still any missing peaks or of course also if there are any surplus peaks that could be removed. So it's always important to keep in mind that these diffraction peaks, this peak data, are the base on which the search match calculation works. Once you have finished defining the peak data, you should think about if there's any kind of additional information about the sample that you could use. For example, the composition. Maybe you have performed an XRF analysis and know about uh, elements that may be present or that can be excluded. Afterwards, you repeat search match calculations and the selection of the major phases. This is just like in the simple qualitative analysis I've just mentioned. Once you have selected the major phases, you should continue and look for minor or trace phases. In order to do so, you should change the search match options. 
by turning off the residual searching. In addition, you should move the preference for single or multiple phases slider over to multiple phases. And finally, you should turn on the graphics option uncorrelated peaks so that you can actually see which peaks are not yet covered by identified phases. One typically starts on the left hand side, mark one of the prominent uncorrelated peaks and perform a search match calculation for this peak by pressing Ctrl Shift M. Then you can check the candidate list if there's any reasonable phase found, select it as matching and then continue with the next uncorrelated peak until there are no more uncorrelated peaks or no more reasonable phases are found. That's it for now. Please take a look at our other tutorial videos either on our webpage or on YouTube. Thanks for watching.